more than half the women in my cabinet, more than, more than half the people in my cabinet, more than half the women in, the, in my administration are women. This is my second video update from Nicosia Cyprus on a very rainy Friday evening. And I want to start off this video update with a correction. The Hill article that I referenced in my morning video update was actually from April 7th, 2022. I caught this article uh, yesterday afternoon on multiple Twitter feeds, good Twitter feeds as well, really reliable Twitter feeds. I saw the article and, uh, and that was the article that I referenced. So for some reason, uh, various Twitter accounts were posting this article. So I just want to make that correction that the article was not a recent article. It was from, from April, which actually makes the author of that article kind of, uh, kind of prescient in a way, because way back in April, he kind of saw what was coming. So that is the correction from my morning video. That is the, mis the mistake that, that I made because you should not go by Twitter posting dates. You should go by article dates. I should double and triple check the article dates. But in this instance, I was looking at the Twitter posting dates. And so I thought it was a recent article anyway. Not a big mistake because the overall analysis was that many Collective West media publications are, are coming out with stories, are coming out with reports, which are describing the situation for Ukraine as very, very bad. And uh, we have an article from Bloomberg with the title Russia to Press Assault in Ukraine's East as Kiev waits for more weapons. And the byline reads, the latest assessment from Ukraine allies. Let me cross here. It is now green. And I will finish reading the byline. One sec. All right. Let's see, the latest assessments from Ukraine's allies point to some difficult weeks ahead for its forces, who now face as many as 300,000 Russian troops along the front lines. Bloomberg is making a very interesting point here, and that is that the fighting in Bakhmut, as we have said in many videos on the Duran, me and Alexander, the fighting in Bakhmut is being done by the Russian forces that have been fighting this conflict over the past year, along with, uh, with Wagner, which is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And so you have 300,000, some, uh, some numbers have it at 500,000 of, of Russian uh, newly mobilized forces, which still have not entered the conflict. And that is what, uh, what Bloomberg is, is hinting at. And that is what is freaking out the collective West and the Ukraine military. And then we have this article from The Guardian, which came out the other day. And The Guardian has been super pro uh, Ukraine and anti-Russian from the beginning of this conflict. And they have the title, Russian forces could regain initiative as Ukraine war drags on. And the byline reads... With Western tanks yet to arrive, invaders may be in a better position in early spring than Ukrainian defenders. That is the title from The Guardian. And the article from The Guardian actually talks about how the Alensky regime is just grabbing people from the streets and sending them to the front lines. They talk about... Uh, the, the terrible state of, of the Ukraine military and, and just how, how the soldiers are very demoralized. And of course, they talk about 
the, uh, the possible Russian offensive, which, as I mentioned in my morning video, the collective West is slating that offensive to happen sometime in the summer. The Guardian is saying springtime, but that's when they believe that this conflict is going to, to be wrapped up sometime in spring, summer. And so that is what the Guardian is saying. So uh, you do have a lot of collective West media outlets sounding the alarm bells in a big, big way. So with that being said, let's do a couple of more news topics to wrap up this video. And we have the meeting that is taking place in Kiev, the summit, the EU, EU-Ukraine summit that is taking place in Kiev and Alensky, Michelle, and Von der Crazy. They uh, held a press conference and in the press conference, Alensky came out and he said that there is no way that Ukraine is retreating from Bakhmut. Здавати Бахмут ніхто не буде. Будемо боротися скільки можемо. Let me find the statement from Alensky. Quote, there will be no withdrawal of Ukrainian troops from the city. This is what he said at a press conference after the Ukraine-EU summit. This little play-acting summit, which, which I find to be very disturbing as thousands of Ukraine military are uh, being sent to certain annihilation in, uh, in Donbass, the European Union and Delensky there. They're going through this little, little theater skit with, uh, with Ukraine entering the European Union. And you can see this photo. I'm going to put up this photo right now. And actually, I use this as the thumbnail, as the cover for a video that me and Alexander just did on the Duran with, uh, with a Ukraine update. But I saw this photo of van der Leyen kissing Alensky. And I believe this is from, uh, from yesterday when... Uh, when they arrived in Kiev or the other day when they arrived in Kiev for this summit. And you can see, I'll double check, I'll double check to make sure that photo is, is recent. But uh, if it is recent, then, uh, you know, you can see, you, you know, von, von der Leyen's like flattered. You know, she's so happy to be seeing Alensky and to receive a kiss from, from the actor. You know, it just, you see photos like that and, and then, you know, you think about what's happening in the Donbass and it's just, it's quite disturbing, isn't it? It's quite disturbing and, uh, and despicable. But anyway, that is the statement from Alensky. So he's just going to continue to, to, uh, to send his, uh, his military into, into Bakhmut, or at least that is what Alensky is, is saying. Those are the orders that he's getting. And so you have to ask yourself, who's uh, giving him these orders? Is it the State Department? Is it, is it the Pentagon? Is it a faction of the Pentagon? Because you have another faction of the Pentagon that is telling him, allegedly, that is telling him to get out of Bakhmut. So who is giving Alensky the orders to continue to throw troops into certain annihilation? I don't know. Uh, Maloney... The Italian prime minister, I believe she said that Alensky is working on a plan to start a dialogue with Moscow. This is kind of breaking news in a way. I don't have much, much more information other than this statement from, uh, from the Italian prime minister. Alensky is, is working on a plan to start dialogue with Moscow. I wonder if they're referencing the video that I talked about a couple of days ago, which came from a Polish uh, media publication, which said that there's going to be some sort of Ukraine summit and meeting in Poland with Biden and Zelensky and, and Ursula and all of these uh, collective West officials. And they're going to present a peace plan and they're going to to try and raise more money and weapons to mark the the one-year anniversary of the 
of the conflict. I wonder if that's what uh, Maloney is referencing. I'm pretty sure that's probably what she's talking about. Some sort of peace plan that's, that's a non-starter. It's going to be a non-starter, but it's going to look good. The optics of it are going to be, are going to be really uh, beneficial for, for Bidenopolis and for the collective West because they can come out and say, well, here's our peace plan. We're calling on Russia to, to pull back and Putin to resign and tribunals and all of these things. And, well, the Russians refuse to accept peace. And so, you know, all, all the fault is theirs because they're refusing, they're refusing to accept our peace plan. That's going to kind of be the narrative. Bidenopolis actually had a very, very good day. Supposedly the job numbers that came out, 517,000 jobs or something like that. There's a Zero Hedge article, which I have to read through, which says that, that the numbers have been, have been fudged to a great degree. They have been uh, manipulated to a great degree. But uh, I, I still I have to read the article and get into the details as to what Zero Hedge is saying. But basically, these numbers are really, really good for Biden, even if they have been... Uh, have been manipulated because he's going to be giving a state of the union i believe february 7th is going to be his state of the union so this this is going to look really really good for biden and uh, i'm sure if he gives a state of the union he can talk up ukraine and he can talk up maybe a meeting in poland with Zelensky. maybe he's going to talk up a peace plan that Zelensky is putting together you know biden the peacemaker i don't know but uh, the Biden White House has said, has announced today that they are sending 2.175 billion in military aid for Ukraine. This is also breaking news. The package is going to include long-range missiles for HIMARS. And basically, the long-range missiles are the 150-kilometer missiles that I mentioned a couple of days ago. The... Uh, the missiles, they're like uh, bombs, I guess, GLSDB ammunition. That's what they're talking about, which have a range of 150 kilometers. Let me read you what Brian Berletic tweeted out with regards to, to these weapons. Brian Berletic's uh, Telegram channel, if you're not following it, follow it. It's a very, very good Telegram channel. This is what uh, he posted. U.S. sending longer range ground launched small diameter bombs, GLSDB for HIMARS. So not missiles, but bombs. Even though these rockets provide Ukraine with the ability to strike at further ranges, and while the rockets and guided bombs exist in large quantities, both integrated into the GLSDB do not. Producing integrated GLSDBs will happen in small numbers. Reuters in a late November article reported the M26 rocket motor is relatively abundant and the GBU-39 costs about $40,000 each, making the completed GLSDB inexpensive and its main components readily available. Although arms manufacturers are struggling with demand, those factors make it possible to yield weapons by early 2023, albeit at a low rate of production. So inexpensive, they can produce these, but it's going to be a low rate of production. But what it does give them is the ability to strike at Russia or to strike towards Russia from, uh, from a longer range. And I talked about, um, or did I talk about this in my morning video? No, I didn't. I don't think I did, but Lavrov, in, uh, I talked about this on the Duran video that me and Alexander did uh, today. But uh, Lavrov, he, uh, he said during an interview with Sputnik yesterday that as, uh, as the collective West provides weapons to Ukraine, which have the ability to strike towards Russia from a further distance, it just means that Russia is going to push back Ukraine further west. That is what Lavrov said in, uh, in an interview. Maybe I did talk about this on one of my interviews. I don't remember anymore. So many videos, I'm starting to, to lose track a bit. But uh, Lavrov said that Russia has an answer for this, and it just means that Ukraine is just going to get pushed further west. The longer the range the missiles or the weapons means the, longer, the, means the further west Russia is going to, uh, to push the Ukraine military back.
that was Lavrov's answer. Let's see, do I have any, let's walk this way, actually. Do I have any other news or can I wrap this video up? I think I can wrap this, uh, this video up with, uh, with the clown world. And this clown world is, look at this puddle. I was just about to, to step into that. Cyprus is not made for, uh, for handling rain. <laughs> it is not made for handling rain. Not at all. So uh, the balloon, this uh, Chinese spy balloon, allegedly a, si a Chinese spy balloon flying over something like Montana or something like that. And everyone is, is freaking out and they're all flipping out over this, this balloon <laughs> flying over the U.S. The panic has... has is, is off the off the charts. I mean, we have the the Secretary of State Anthony Blinken now coming out and saying that uh, he was preparing to visit China, but now with this balloon, he is uh, postponing his trip. This is according to ABC News, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is postponing his visit to China after the balloon was tracked soaring across the country. All of this over a spy balloon. <laughs> I don't get it, man. I don't know. Maybe this is serious. I don't know. But uh, you would think that China, the U.S., Russia, all these countries have planes and they're spying on each other 24-7. I mean, <laughs> I imagine that the U.S. has all kinds of, uh, of satellites and, and planes hovering over China and spying on China and vice versa. So a balloon, a freak out over a balloon, I don't know. All of this is happening right before Biden's State of the Union. We had Lloyd Austin in the Philippines and he's, he's ramping things up in the Philippines. I think it's something like four more uh, US bases or something like that, that are gonna be, uh, that are gonna be placed in the Philippines, I don't know. Maybe a narrative shift from Ukraine to China. Maybe Biden's going to announce something in the State of the Union. All, all of this stuff is, is happening at a time when, uh, when Biden is about to make a big speech. Who knows? Who knows? Biden is one lucky dude. I am telling you, one lucky dude. Record, record job, uh, job numbers. Chinese spy balloon that he can now come out and say the U.S. is uh, canceling a trip to China. Because, yeah, the U.S. is canceling a trip to China because they're spying on us. So he's he's the you know he's a tough president. Two billion aid package to Ukraine. Perhaps a peace proposal when he goes to Poland. The stars are aligning for Bidenopolis. One lucky dude wins an election from his basement. <laughs> the guy is charmed. <laughs> anyway, that's my video, everybody. TheDurant.Locals.com. We are on Rockfin. And go to the Durant shop. 10% off. Use the code GOODDAY. Take care.